I will do the talk in English because there's some people from Portsmouth attending the presentation. And, and yeah, so this is a bit a uh, presentation of an idea that I have in my mind. And it's been good to put it down on a, on a presentation because all, a lot of things came together that were a bit sparse on my head. Um, so I think my objective is to create this simulation that uses, uses oceanographic variables. And now I'm just focusing on the sea surface because it's already a huge uh, like endeavor. Okay, so I will talk a bit about my professional trajectory also for the people that don't know me in the department. I mean, you know who I am, but you don't know where I come from, the things I studied. Um, so the first years I, talk, I worked in, uh, in Pompeu Fabra. And I mostly did uh, something with virtual reality, computer graphics. I was in a lot of different projects and I was switching from project to project. So it was a very varied uh, time, like four years. And then in 2015, I started collaborating with the University of Oldenburg that they want to do some 3D environments. And they got me a scholarship that was a Marie Curie. And I went there. I had to go there. I tried to work remotely from Spain, but they told me I have to be there. So I, I went there, I did my PhD there about audiovisual perception. It was in the Faculty of Medicine and also in the Faculty of Mathematics, the master I did there. And then in 2020, there was a pandemic and I decided a bit to change my, my career and go a bit with marine sciences. So I was taking a bit the options I had and one option was to do web development. So I entered, I contacted uh, ICM and they directed me to, to Brunet Cat, where I was uh, working in data visualization. And now I finished the PhD in 2023, in August 2023, I finished my PhD. Uh, so now I'm officially a postdoc and uh, I'm starting here my work at ICANMAR that in principle there's a six year uh, position that uh, will, I will have uh, time here to maybe develop some, some of the things that I will present today. So for the highlights, I select some of the stuff I did before. I mean, this, this is from 2014, so it's a bit old, but this is the thing I found uh, that maybe is related to what I'm doing. Uh, so here, so here's a, a, a three visualization I did about the Barcelona World Race, which is a regatta that go around the world. Um, uh, you can see the, the virtual boats that they were playing the video game, and in the red ones you are the real boats that they were sailing. So it was a video game, and if you won, you would win a car. So it was. Um, yeah, so then I was I was trying to improve this to add some some clouds and they are they are not true but uh, and also to add some winds and here I was a bit blocked because I didn't know where to get the data so now being at uh, an ICM is good because I know where to get this data um, and the other one was a simulation about um, about a boat simulation where I already worked a bit with the, the sea but it was a, just a package that you can download that you can put it. And the last one I put it in because uh, it's uh, some work I did with the inertial measurement units that maybe it will be useful for buoys that contain accelerometers here. So it's just that I also have a background on, on accelerometers and, and these kind of sensors. Okay, so the project I'm presenting today, uh, it's 15, so I, I have a lot of slides, I have about 40 slides, so I will be checking the clock now and then, okay? But maybe some things I will have to skip. Um, so this is the, the main idea, okay, it's very simple, you know, like two things, the real sea and the virtual sea. And the virtual sea, I like to put this, this uh, kind of uh, tag here, that's the 3D digital twin, because it's a keyword that's been used a lot to get funding, and I think it's a good way to also scope the project, to have this digital twin there. I will not go into depth about what digital twins are, what do they mean, I will just say that it's a word people use to get funding. Um, so let's see, so from the real, this is a bit uh, the overview of the project uh, in very simple ways, the, in very simple graph. Okay, so we have the real state, we have the observations, which are the buoys, the cameras, uh, the sensors that measure the sea surface, and from that we create the visual sea state, and we get some observations, some virtual observations of our sea state that we want to compare with our input of the simulation. Okay. So as far as I know, there's been a lot of work like doing the virtual state 
uh, getting observations, doing virtual state from observations, but as not so many people, I think that nobody had done this, that you check from the observations, the virtual observations back to the input of the simulation. So there's a bit of an ease there. And if we put it a bit more complex, we can say that from the real steel we have images, we have oceanographic variables, which are the sea wave height, the, the, the period, the direction, the spectrum, if you have it. And that would go into the simulation parameters and you would create your computer graphic simulation that will give you the virtual sea state. And from the virtual sea state you can get the oceanographic variables and also the render. The render is just images, is a way that people use this uh, term in computer graphics to say that is the final image of your simulation. I divided this into word packages because in my mind it couldn't fit all, so I had to divide it some way. So I put one word package that it was the oceanographic variables in the simulation. So how to do this this transformation and, and what uh, do what these parameters mean from the from the observations. Then the work package two, which is about the, the virtual state, and work package three, which is about the validation of the simulation. So in terms of titles, yeah, we have the generation of the simulation, and then the, re the rendering of the ocean, and then we have the validation. I will, I will now I will go about the work packages and the work that it means and like the, the challenges that, that I will face in this process. So video images. Video. Yeah, this is a, like a very qualitative uh, kind of approach. That you have a video and then you check the computer simulation and you see how close it is to that. And that's very challenging because there will be a lot of things that uh, come into play like the how is the sky, the clouds, the white water, a lot of effects that, well, I will see because uh, some, some places you have images, so it's a, it's a good reference to have. You know, if you have the images and then you have the data from those images, you can generate your visual see, make the render and say, okay, it's completely different or more or less looks the same. Also, I can play with the, with the simulation parameters to try to get closer to the image. Context. So this, this spatial scale that you're targeting, is that what you show there? Yeah, okay. it's, it's a small scale. Okay. Yeah. It's not, yeah. So to constrain a bit the work and give it a scope, these are the, the constraints of the of this work package. First time is that I want it to be operational, okay? I know there's a lot of data that you can get online, you can download, you know, CDFs and uh, but what I want it to be is that you can enter a website and you see the real-time update, okay? So that's already limiting me to a lot, to, to very few products that offer this kind of data. And I'm also doing deep sea conditions, so I'm not working on the coastline, just because also the simulation is different and more complex. In terms of rendering, this has to be below 60 milliseconds of computation. So you see that I kind of spend a lot of time uh, doing the the simulation of the of the sea surface. I want it to be realistic, interactive, and web-based, so you can access it on the web. Web is not an application that you download and you install and you open. Uh, this is also an issue because a lot of computer simulations have been done uh, like on desktop applications, but not in the web. I'm just curious, where is that 16 coming from? It's like 60 frames per second, I think, or 40 or 30. I don't remember. But it's just I know because when you do the implementation, you want that the time step is like 16, more or less. Yeah, it's more already. So to give you an example of the tasks, uh, maybe some of you have already seen the simulation of the OPSI. This is a bit work package one and work package two, but I will just show it related to work package one. That is, uh, they basically have data for the last 10 years. Uh, you can click and you, the simulation changes according to the data that they have in different days. So this is already uh, like the first step, my project that I did, but it's a very rough approximation of the sea surface. Um, then the second part, for example, is just about computer graphics. So for example, what I'm doing is that uh, this is my ocean on the left, and on the right you can see the reprojection of the mesh on the ocean, because in order to have the sea surface you have to deform the vertices, and on the previous simulation you saw, there's just a circle around. Here there's a circle around, so if I move away, you see that the resolution goes down. And also it's um, more computationally expensive to render all these vertices. 
And in here, for example, what I'm doing is I'm optimizing this. So I just have a plane, I project it on the, on the ground, and then I deform this. And if the camera moves, this moves accordingly. Obviously, there are some tricks. For example, the green is a virtual camera because when you project on the horizon, it goes to infinity. Anyway, it's another topic. And for validity, I just put this example that it's, a, it's just a 360 degree video that you can see the, the virtual C and the real C and you can compare it. Obviously, this has to be like uh, designed better. I mean, it's just a first approximation, so you get an idea. And I also get an idea of the steps that go into this direction of the validation of the simulation. Okay, so work package is done. Good. Um, let's go through a bit of theory of the ocean. How, how can we interpret the waves? So one way to see this uh, ocean is uh, that we just have a series of waves, like composed of three, like high period direction, maybe phase also. You just add them all together, and at the end you have the scissor phase. Okay, so that's a bit uh, how we can think about uh, how the uh, the scissor phase uh, is generated. Easy enough. We can just have a, a simulation that uh, we input the, these waves. No? So have a see. And uh, we just put a wave of, let's say, one meter, period two, direction zero, and we have a wave, okay? And then we can add another one, three, direction five, zero, and we can add another one, another direction, okay, so you can see that this keeps adding, and then you start to generate the ocean, and if you add a lot, you start to get a mess, okay? Because obviously these are, are not generated according to the spectrum of the ocean, okay? So let's see, how then can we get this information? So currently, according, this is 2010, I don't know if the, this thing evolved a lot, but there's no system, observation system that gives you exactly the full spectrum. Okay, so you, don't, you cannot get like this, I don't know, 1,000 waves of the ocean. You can get some information, but you don't have it all. So, how does it look? It also has some certain shape, some spectral shape, this ocean. So, I, I like these plots because they gather all the information. On the like polar axis, you have the period. So, the closer you are to the center, the more periodic the wave is, and the far away you are from the center is uh, more uh, less periodic. So, there will be more wind waves, and to the center there will be more swell. And on the bottom you have the energy and uh, the radius, obviously this is the direction of the incoming waves. How they are generated, usually it's a storm that pushes uh, with the wind, pushes the waves, creates a direction, and that creates a swell after the storm that is left. And this is an interesting term, I will not be talking about fetch, but it's the distance that the storm goes past. I don't know the definition very well, but it basically means that if there's a storm that's been for traveling for many kilometers, then it will generate a different kind of swell, and if it's shorter, it will create some other waves. So let's see an example. I, I put these two stations from Hawaii. Uh, you can see the one on the left, uh, the 223, is from, from Pearl Harbor, and it's receiving a lot of wind waves. On the bottom, you see this is like high frequency, so very small waves and very spread. And on Maui, on the top, is uh, this wind is blocked by the island, and you can see that it's getting a very clear swell from the from the north. Okay, you can see a point that it's around like I think it's 12 seconds period. Okay, does anybody imagine how the sea looks like when you look at this? Okay, so this is the goal of the project. Okay, you have this data, yeah, it's very, uh, but you have to interpret it. And obviously, my project is about divulgation. Yes, it's, it's not uh, it's, it's science, but the objective is to be able that the people understand how this data look in real life and to have this uh, technology uh, knowledge transfer. So let's see what can, what is given from the observation. What systems do we have? No, different systems provide different data. So this Jacques Bui is the one that uh, Puerto del Estado uses. So we have one in Barcelona, one in Begur, one in Tarragona, there are several all over, all over the state. And you can get the data from an API, so you can just make a petition and you get the data directly uh, in real time. So this is one of the one of the targets I have in mind, that is this, this buoy from here, because there's one that's quite close from us. 
Um, then there's the one from Opsi that is in Villanova. Uh, this is like a, a current profiler that is on the bottom of the sea and just measures the displacement of the water. And actually this one gives you much more detailed information than the one from Berto. So for example, here we have uh, mean wave height, wave one third, wave maximum, one tenth, different periods, and you also have the directional spreading. I will not go into depth because this is one of it is a presentation, okay, on how to deal with this data and what data do they give you. And I also put this one from San Diego because they give you the raw displacement of the buoy. So this is, this is very good for me because I can work with raw data and I can see how this get these variables. So what I was doing is that I was trying from these displacements, I was trying to get the wave height and see if it was the same one that they were providing in their in their website. And, and then I put these two on the bottom because it's also relevant for, for uh, checking the, for validating. And one is this one that they have two cameras and they have installed this in several places in the world and they have videos from, from these cameras. And they also have like a wave gauge that gives you the wave height in, a, in like 200 hertz. So high precision data there to check. And obviously there's a lot of data, for example, here that, that measures this, but haven't gone into it, I haven't seen any APIs, and I think that as, as being a consumer, I'm a consumer of this data, so I haven't seen this data a lot uh, for consumer use. And as an example, here's a, a presentation of, of uh, Andrea. Andrea, I think. And uh, you can see that each one of them gives you a lot of different parameters, so you have to work with these parameters to generate the simulation. And I put here is one requires a different method, different exploration, different research. Okay? <coughs> and this is work package one. For a starting point, for example, uh, just to give you a bit of theory and uh, like go down a bit on the uh, touch of the ground and then like uh, what do we have to do actually. So for example, from the portals we have the mean wave, wave height, the period, we get the spectrum model that has been done in the in the North Sea. And then you also have a directional spreading function because it's not only important to know the wave height but also the direction. And then you can add this and decompose it into different waves coming from different directions. And what I got stuck now is in deciding how many waves to put here and how to make this from individual wave components. There's papers that do this, so it's just a matter of reading, going into it and and I'm working with yeah. the <laughs> yeah. And also important to know is just uh, that there's a lot of information because uh, this, uh, for example, from Puertos, you only get one direction. And, it, and maybe with the period you can guess that it's a wind sea and it's a swell, but when you have seas that are mixed, for example, you have a storm coming from one direction and a swell that came from another direction, you cannot represent, you, lost, you lose this information. And uh, just, uh, just to have in mind that the models can provide this data and they have APIs in real time and they provide, for example, the one from Copernicus gives you swell 1, swell 2, wind sea and total sea. So you can get this information and maybe during the validation, validation phase realize that if you input this data you can get better simulations on, of the sea that complement this. Okay, this one... Um, I divide it into three, so the, how do we move the mesh, how do we paint the water, and other relevant features for the sea simulation. I'm making a very abstract presentation because to go into depth into these ones, into each, each one of these, it's a, it's, a, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of information. So, so we, one can divide this into three kinds of approaches to do this in computer graphics and one is the, let's say, geometric model. You have a trigonometric function and you displace the, each vertex of, of your mesh and you move it. The other is you have a spectral shape, like a, spectral of, a spectrum of the ocean. You make the inverse FFT and then you displace the vertices using that information. And the last one is the Euler and Lagrangian model, where you do numerical modeling of the particles, how do they move in the water and how they interact. Usually the last one is the one that's more realistic and is the one that's used in cinema. Although I have to say the way the spectral models are a lot are also very used in cinema because they, they provide a very realistic um, 
render of the sea because they use the real sea spectrum. So we have this data. And I, I put here a lot of links. There's like, for example, there's a link on YouTube that explains you how to do like ocean simulation that looks very realistic or with, I don't know if they are free tools, but mm, that it's the state of the, of the art of computer graphics of water simulation is very advanced and you can make very realistic things, but not online, uh, not in real time. In real time, there are some approaches, but obviously they are state of the art and I don't know if I have the time and expertise to implement them, so I'm going to be looking more at things that have been there for the last 20 years. <coughs> I don't know if to skip this because um, this may be more for me because it's uh, about the limitations of each approach because you have to implement this in the GPU. GPU doesn't work as CPU, for example, it's uh, all parallelized. Uh, you cannot store information from the previous frame. It has a lot of limitations. And yeah, then, then for example, the FFT uh, on the GPU, this is not like you go in MATLAB and you do FFT. You have to implement it yourself and you use textures to store the data. It's a bit more complicated. So there are a lot of effects in water. I will put you this demo so you can see what can be done. Um, so this is in real time. This is in, in, in the web. You have a ball, you can move it, you can interact with the water. And here you have some effects like you have um, like the water reflection. I, I don't know if you can see this. You can see some clouds here. And you also have uh, diffraction that the water when it comes in it changes the shape. This one here. We have reflectance, absor absorption they don't have there, they don't have like scattering but they have these caustics that is this effect on the bottom that you see. Some of these are not important for me because I will be working in deep water so caustics for example I don't care about them. So these are the ones I will be focused on. The simulation that you saw from the OPC it only has reflectance and this is you can see it on the floor or some like long surfaces that are reflective that when you have a like a sharper incidence on the on the on the surface you don't see the reflection but as it gets more shallow the reflection angle uh, you can see the reflection so you can see here in this effect that the water in the front is more blue and later it gets the color of the sky because it has a different incidence okay and some other features are the capillary waves I put you I Put those examples here, that the one is without and one is with. So these are very small waves that are created in the ocean. And the one in the left, the water looks very plastic because you don't have this, this texture on top of it. And the one on the right has this small texture that makes these water uh, crests. And also breaking waves are very important for the simulation. And there's a lot of uh, literature that talks about in a, for example, this one, this paper here, they talk about like in a, I don't know, 100 meter by 100 meter, how if you take a picture, how, which amount of it is white in percentage and they relate it to the wind. So then you can say how much uh, white water is there. And what package three, which is the validation. And I will talk about the quantitative and the qualitative. Um, so to make a bit of a draft here, you get the data from the API, you have the input variables, you make the simulation parameters, you have the visual C, then in the visual C you make an analysis and you try to get the same variables. The same way, if you have the videos and images of, of your, where the place the data is collected, then you can get, uh, compare them to your renders and see if, the, if there's any resemblance and try to get uh, accurate. And obviously this, if you want, you can like close it in a circle and keep optimizing your system so it looks better and it's more uh, resembling to the reality. And just to give a hint about like the things that you can find here is that, for example, the wave height, the significant wave height is measured different in different devices. So for example, you can do the standard deviation and multiply it by four or just the displacements of the surface. Uh, you can divide by zero crossing each wave individually and then you sort it out and you get the one that is one third and you decide that the wave significant wave height. You can get the RMS and also work some formulas. So different systems, different significant wave height, a lot of reading about what this boy gives you, how does he calculate it. Yeah.
a bit of like okay so to put a bit of uh, milestones in the project to know like okay I reach this point I'm, I'm I'm going in this direction for example the first one that I already explained is the one from Puertos and I think it's a fairly simple step or like a good start to get this data and the question here is in red is, is I can make regular field trips to get these images. I mean, the buoy is like seven kilometers away from from ICM, so it's it's possible. You know, it's not that you have to go to the Canary Islands to somewhere or to Begur to to make it. So it's it's, a bit, it's close. And the other one is uh, to get from these uh, stereo cameras. You get the, from the stereo cameras you get a three D image of the ocean, and then from there you can get directly the spectrogram. So you can work with that. And you can do a virtual C, generate the spectrogram, and get the, compare the videos and the renders. So these are the two milestones. Uh, I divided the project in tasks. I mean, this is for myself, you know. It's a, I'm presenting you here a project, and there's a lot of information. I, mean, I know it's hard to go down into which it's a specific task. It's, uh, it's a lot, but I. I yeah. In the anterior, pones que. Sorry, I'm speaking English. Um, you say that there is only historical data. Yeah. You are talking about uh, video or images? Video. Video. Yeah. Okay. So they, they provide this data set from these different locations, and obviously, I don't, they they give you like I don't know how much time of data they give you, but I know that the images are taking every I don't know, every one second. Okay. And they. Oh, it's because I was thinking that I think you are aware that there is a the camera. Yeah. Huh? So you can yeah. have these images, mm. which is a snapshot. The problem with the camera, I talked with Gonzalo, and they also do this with a drone. They go there, and they get the modes of the waves. So they get maybe five waves, okay. and from this you can get the spectrogram. And there is a wave gauge in one of these stations that measures the displacement of the water exactly. So this is what I wanted to have because the, the, this is using computer vision to make this transformation. And I don't know if the data is very accurate. So to have this laser that measures also for me is important. That gives you the, the truth, no? the truth displacement of the water. We tried to get the same system, like to put in the virtual sea to virtual cameras and then to reconstruct, because, but I don't have white water and the system couldn't reconstruct the 3D mesh from just the images. So a lot of detail is important that the sea has a lot of detail or has, for example, reflections of the clouds and then you can differentiate different areas of blue and can make this 3D reconstruction. Yeah. Okay. So the tasks, mm, yeah, we want to go around through it, but I think it's like all of, one of these. Each one is like a bachelor thesis or a master thesis. And yeah, I don't know. It's interesting to just put it all down and then see if I can do some of the steps or which places I can follow. And funding is a question. <laughs> so I don't know. I put it here. Some of the stuff that I heard. So I could do with the students, some bachelor thesis, internships. Then I heard about this Pala Ciencia from Barcelona, that for example, there's the Puden buoy that uh, they will put. And maybe then they want a digital twin of this buoy, so you can get some funding there to make 3D like uh, recordings of that buoy. Or even install a buoy with uh, accelerometer, GPS. I checked the Oyster Aeromarine, but I missed this year. Um, I think the Severo show maybe if it gets renewed, they also have some money for this stuff. Plan of Final, I don't know if somebody told me yesterday <coughs> that because I have a secure contract, maybe I can have some money. I don't know, I have no idea. And then in Copernicus, they have also, they have all this European digital twin that they are moving. It's not about data visualization, but I think this can get some attention because they are, there are a lot of stations, for example, the OPSI has been collected, collecting data for 10 years. and. And there are a lot of stations that maybe need this kind of digital twin to share the data they have because they have this data and I don't think it reaches civil society so much. So this is an open question also for the table because people here have much more experience than me in getting funding. 
So yeah. this is a bit of a research line that I found I could do at ICM, and I see I'm not stepping on anybody. It's something different. I have like the collaboration from UPF. I have a good relationship with them because they do computer graphics, so and they are they are much better than me. And I think it's, uh, yeah. It's an idea, I just wanted to show it. Maybe nothing happens, you know, maybe I get busy because at the end I have to do web development in my job. So I don't have all the time in the world to dedicate to this. So I'm here if you say, ah, maybe this is interesting or maybe we can do this thing together, you know, like you can contact me. At the end is a bit, look, what I'm afraid is that now I'm, I'm, I'm in the postdoc position and I, don't I didn't win any scholarship. So I am afraid that in six years I'm going to be like, okay, like my CV is going to be, yeah, you work as a web developer for six years, uh, maybe you have one or two publications. So it's a bit that if they are competitive, I can put it in my CV. And, I mean, the Oyster, for example, was uh, 7.K. Uh, and you could only spend it in research, uh, like it was more for biology, so if you wanted to analyze some samples, you could pay a laboratory and they would, they would do this. Uh, my idea was to pay somebody to go outside and make 360 degree videos and have this data and yeah, but I, yeah, I don't know, I'm not sure how important it is to make these videos because if I already have like a camera that is recording, I can do this. But I think that for the buoys, for example, if we want to put a buoy from Icatmar or like the buoys from Puertos, I think it's important to go there and check what's happening, you know, in different sea states. If you go there, you make a video and then you see what the buoy is measuring, what the video is giving, and then you do the simulation and you try to, to match what's going on, you know, and see if there's a lot of information, how much they can capture. We also talk about, for example, these guys that, uh, I don't know how they're called, see and and uh, Moises, I don't know what's the company called. Um, they're installing coastal buoys where they use, basically the buoys that are used for signalizing the limitation for the vessels to go inside the beach, they are installing their uh, buoys to measure waves. For example, this is a possible collaboration with them. I talked with them because they, they did it in Sitges, I think, and I told them, look, maybe you want this, you know? So instead, in the website, they can have a 3D simulation of the coast and they ha can have some waves. Obviously this is here, you know, ideas that you have a coastal environment. Could be done, I mean, there's, uh, the Google provides you the 3D dives and maybe you could include the 3D dives of Google and have the coast instead of, because if you take a picture of the coast and you move then 100 meters of the simulation, it doesn't look the same. So you have to have a 3D reconstruction. I mean, yeah, if you have time and, and the resources. And there are other things here, for example, there's the ACE data, this is more towards the digital twin. You can include this data, you can also do underwater stuff, uh, include more variables for the digital twin, also include the models and forecast. I mean, a lot of things come here. Also about uh, video game applications, for example. So, yeah, I think this was the last slide. Yeah. So, I don't know if you want to comment on something I was, it was very abstract the presentation and I didn't go into detail into things. So it's hard to comment technically. So but if, if, I, if I got the picture right, and I'm a little bit confused right now, you've got a research, you know, money. I don't have I don't have for, you, for yourself for a number of years, six years or something yes. like that you said. Yeah. And you're looking for research funding just to be able to develop some of the ideas that you're presenting here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right. more than... I was confused because you actually have developed everything as, you know, work package one, two, three mm -hmm. tasks. And I thought you were actually presenting a project with budget milestones. <laughs> oh, I wish, here, right? I wish. <laughs> but, but then it's a bit confused at the very end when you come and you say, well, I'm looking actually for sources of funding. Where can I go with this kind of thing? As a, as a first year postdoc, I don't know what are my options to present a project like this. And I don't know if I have the experience to present a project like this and manage it also. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I wrote it down and it was to present it here to say, does it make sense? Mm -hmm. And if anybody thinks that it doesn't make sense, please tell me because it's important for me, you know? Because I have no idea if. Uh, this is this makes sense or not. More than the funding, it's also that I 
I can win on a competitive yeah. funding proposal, you know, because I mean, a lot of the work that I present here, like if you go through the tasks, a lot of this can be done like by with a computer, you know, you just don't need anything else. All the data is there, and I think there's plenty of work to be done without spending any money. I mean, maybe a computer, you know. We we were talking the other day about GPS. Uh, I use and integrate with yeah. ways to just have some understanding of displacement and accelerations and so on. I think it's we uh, looking at Ferran here. We just brought some GPS systems to the RT, mm -hmm. and I think we can make a donation to you of some of those systems if they come back. For you know, <laughs> you know, in the research funding, okay. <laughs> if you want to test or try some of the things with them and integrate mm -hmm. with, and I knew that you were mentioning before, yeah. and just like throw them out there and, and see how mm -hmm. it works. Yeah, it will be a possibility. I thought I don't know about the moorings. I know that the them will be there, but it's not planned that it has and uh, like a weight measurement. I can show you something that is always nice to see. So you don't know what this is. The 20th, 21st of January of 2020. <coughs> Gloria. Yes. <laughs> ah, the good thing with the geometric model is that I can simulate uh, like as height as I want, the, any height I want. The problem, for example, with the FFT, the FFT gives you tiles, and then what people do is that they have they have a combination of tiles, so big tiles for big waves and small tiles for small waves. So I think there's an example that I put it here from the tiles. That you can see what I mean. So they give you a tile. And then, for example, this is done with, uh, I think, Pearson Moscovici spectrum, so the input is the wind. And they also have some parameter. I mean, people that work in computer graphics, the parameters they want to use are the ones that artists use for creating simulations. So you want to have very, very simple sliders, move up and down, you know. I mean, it's a bit the simulation also, you can control the scene here. And you have these like sliders that you can select. Mm. Like basically, what I'm doing here is like I have one one wave, which is the swell, no, and then I have the choppiness of the water, and I add small waves here, so you can get this this kind of thing. I mean, when I use the data from Oxy, I also have directional spreading, which that then I can configure the waves to take different directions. Like if it's more narrow, then you will see like uh, all the waves move in a certain direction. If it's more spread, there will be more randomness. And here I also added that, for example, let's, let's say you can move this to very small. I added that you can select a certain, certain wave here and add it. Yeah, you can have this. I mean, is this, and the question is, is this close to reality, you know? I mean, it's a simulation, you know? Like, um, I'm inventing here. So the, that's the final question. Because all the simulations they do for movies, they don't care. It looks good. Let's go, you know. But as I'm doing science, no, let's check it out. Very good. Shall we give him a round of applause? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.